Hi, Al Williams here. I wanted to show you uh, real quickly a couple of shell scripts I wrote. I guess you could say four shell scripts, but it's really two sets of two. And they allow you to edit either your path or an environment variable in your, either your favorite editor or right at the command line. And that may sound kind of silly, but I'll show you in just a second why that's useful and interesting. So the code's actually on GitHub. If you're a developer and you've got Git, you can clone the repository. If that doesn't mean anything to you, you can just go to github.com. And you can put in basically almost all of this URL. Go to github.com slash wd5gnr slash path edit and just leave off the dot git. And you can find a zip file that you can download from there and get these files. And there's not much to it. It's not like you have to build any software or anything. It's just four shell scripts and a readme file. And what you'll notice is there's no executable bits set on these particular shell scripts. And that's because we're going to edit environment variables. If I change the environment variables in a regular script, it only changes it for that copy of bash and any of the copies that run after that but it's once it exits those variable changes will be lost and so that would make this useless and so we had to run these as source files now there's a couple of ways you can do that you can put a dot in front of the file name or you can say the word source and you could do that I'm going to show you how you can only do it one time though and if you put this in one of your startup files you would never have to actually do that uh, I would normally copy those four files, or at least the ones I wanted, into some binary directory like user local bin, or I keep a private directory with that's on my path that has a lot of binaries that I've personally written or that I use that are not part of the normal install. So you could do that. Uh, I'm not going to do it in this particular case. I'm just going to use them right here. So I don't like having to remember to source it all the time. And that's the source, or you could say the word source, but I'm going to use the period. And then I've got to tell it I'm using this particular script in the current directory. So under Linux, the path doesn't normally contain the current directory, so it's not going to find it unless I give it the full path there. And I'm going to put the word alias after it. And that's going to create an alias for me called pathed. And now I can use that every time instead of saying dot, dot, slash, pathedit. So pathed is going to essentially do the same thing. When I say pathed and hit enter, my favorite editor comes up, which is Emacs, and there's my path. Now, you may not like Emacs. It's not hard-coded in there. Usually your system has an idea of what your favorite editor is. It's in the editor variable or the visual editor, or excuse me, visual variable, and it pulls it from there. So this could even be a GUI editor if you like. Uh, so let's just change a few things. Let's take off these microchip directories, and I'll leave that one, and I'll take off the snap bin, and I'm going to replace it with user local my bin, which doesn't exist, but that doesn't matter. So I will go ahead and save this file, close Emacs, and it looks like nothing really happened. but you'll see that in fact it changed my path. And the environment editor is the same thing. I can say dot dot slash env edit alias. And now I can say env ed and let's pick an environment variable like ps1. That's your shell prompt. And it'll come up and bring that up. And that's the shell prompt. Now, I'm not going to save this one. And you can see it's smart enough to say, oh, well, that wasn't a change, so I'm not going to make a change. If you delete everything in the file and save an empty file, it won't take that either. It'll say, oh, that was no change. Uh, if you really want to delete something, you would have to unset it, for example. I'm not going to do that. So you might wonder, what's the difference between path edit and path edit 2 and env edit and env edit 2? Let's try that. We'll do this with a path edit 2, and I'll tell it to do an alias, and it uses the same alias. Obviously, you could change that, or you could make your own alias up. But now if I say path ed, it's essentially the same thing, but it takes the path 
and puts it into my command buffer. And so however you normally do command editing in your shell, in your bash shell, you can now edit this line just like that. And whatever change you make when you hit enter, that's going to take that path. I won't make a change in this particular case. So pretty good. Uh, I guess the other thing to point out is if you really were interested in having kind of the functionality of both, it's kind of a little known uh, bash command. But if you're right here at a command prompt with a bunch of stuff typed in, you can type control X, control E, and you'll see that the editor will come up with whatever command you have in it. This isn't something to do with what I've written. This is just a feature of bash that I find a lot of people don't know about. So I could come in here and say, for example, uh, cut off that last directory that I put in. And when I save it and exit, it will in fact execute that command, which it just did. So pretty interesting set of scripts. It's one of those things that's not rocket science. And yeah, you could copy and paste and do a lot of things. But it's very convenient to be able to edit those environment variables directly. So again, you know, it's on GitHub under WD5GNR path edit. Uh, you can download the files directly there or you can clone them off GitHub like I did. Either way, uh, you can get the files, stick them somewhere where they're binaries. Again, you can run them with source or you can get the alias created or you could create your own aliases. Uh, do that in your startup scripts and they just become commands in the shell like anything else. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.